Hi, how are you today? Welcome to our today's session. Today, we want us to look at uh, group accounts. Remember, I'm giving you this particular session from RCM Online College. And again, I'm underscoring uh, online because ours is a 100% a virtual training uh, platform for accountants in East Africa. Should you be interested in our tutorials, please get in touch with us. This is our number 0719 525,000. So today, I would want us straight away to use very few minutes to showcase how we compute goodwill, how we compute goodwill in a, a consolidation process. So I want to share my question with you here. It's May 2019, question number two, financial reporting. Financial reporting, May 2019, question number two. Fanaka Limited acquired 90% of the ordinary shares uh, of shillings 10 power value in Mali Limited on 1st January 2015, when Mali Limited had revenue reserves of 1,500 million. So the most important thing is that we acquired quite a high stake in Mali, meaning straight away, 90% is high, meaning straight away that Mali, even without any further ado, I'll be able to mention right away that uh, Fanaka here becomes the parent. Of course, Mali becomes who? A subsidiary on 1st January 2015, when Mali had uh, those revenues. We are told here that Mali Limited acquired 160 million ordinary shares of 10 per value in Kwetu Limited on 1st January 2016, when Kwetu Limited had uh, revenue reserves of shillings 500 million. So the gentlemen, I would want straight away to start with our first uh, step, which is uh, ascertainment of what here, the group structure. So the first thing you need to do is to come and give us the group structure. So group structure. So we have a company here called Fanaka, Fanaka, which acquired who? Mali. And the Mali went ahead to acquire, Mali went ahead to acquire a company. Mali went ahead to acquire a company known as Kwetu. A company known as Kwetu. A company known as Kwetu. Kwetu. So what do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? What we have here is that uh, Fanaka acquired 90% of Mali, 90% is way above 50%. And there is nowhere, they are telling us that Fanaka ceded control of M. So straight away, F will be called the parent company. And this M becomes what here? A subsidiary. Very important. A subsidiary. A subsidiary. And then now we have Kwetu here. For Kwetu, which is K there, for Kwetu, which is K there, we are told it's Mali that made their acquisition. It's Mali that made the acquisition. So Mali acquired 160 million ordinary shares of 10 per value, 10 per value in Kuwait 2. So it means that uh, Mali acquired 160, 160 million shares. I can leave out the millions. So 160 out of how many shares does Kuwait to have in total? How many shares does Kuwait to have in total? How many shares does Kuwait to have in total? Kwetu, if you look at uh, the statement of financial position here, Kwetu has got how many shares? Kwetu has got how many shares? You'll be able to see here. Ordinary share capital and the Kwetu column of Kwetu is 4,000. But now remember 4,000, this is money. I need to change this to nodes. I need to change this to number of ordinary shares. So how do I change this to number of ordinary shares? You'll take the 4,000 divided by the power value. Power value, remember here, is 10. So you take 4,000, whenever you want to convert share capital in shillings to share capital or rather to number of shares, to number of shares, to number of shares, what you do is to take the, the share capital, the share capital that you are given here, and then you divide this by what here by par. So you'll take 4,000, you divide by 10. You take 4,000, you divide by 10. So 4,000 divided by 10 is 400. So in this case here, then what is 100? and 60 divided by 400, and then you multiply this with 100 for purposes of what here, changing this to a percentage. So what do we have here at the end of the day? What do we have here at the end of the day? So at the end of the day, this is what we shall have. We have 160 divided this by, so it's 160 divided this by 400, yeah, times 100, I'm getting 40%. So I'm getting 40%. So 
So remember 40% falls in which category? In the category, remember our categories, that uh, if, for example, we have a parent company, rather than an investor company, investor company, this investor company, for instance, has got a company A, it has got company B. Company A, in terms of quantitatives, quantitatively, company A will be called a subsidiary if, if a subsidiary of the investor, if this investor has shares which are more than 50%. So here we are talking of more than 50%, more than 50%, more than 50%, more than 50%. So here it's more than 50%, then A becomes a subsidiary. What if, for example, we had a, an investment of 40% in B? So of course, 40% will be falling in this class, 20% all the way to 49.999%. 20% to 49.999%. This kind of an investment, of course, will be falling under what we call this, if, if your investment falls in this bracket, then your investment here will be called what here? Will be an associate, will be an associate, will be an associate. Fortunately for section three financial reporting, now they have dropped this associate uh, concept from uh, the new syllabus, from the new syllabus. I'm only capturing it for purposes of our group structure. Otherwise we'll not be doing uh, associates in section three. That's very important for us to know. So ladies and gentlemen here, K of course will be an associate, will be an associate of M. And if it's an associate of M, automatically it becomes an associate of this company. So it is an associate of the group. I've always tried or rather seen students trying taking this percentage and this percentage low. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are just appraising to know the status of the investment, if this K is an associate of our subsidiary, if K is a, a, an associate of our subsidiary, it also becomes automatically an associate of the parent company, an associate of the parent company, the share holding the percentages here not withstanding, the percentages not withstanding. So that should have been the first thing for us to do in this particular what year question. Once you get the group structure correctly, then every other thing will fall in place. The group structure must be ascertained. And once now you have been able to ascertain the group structure correctly, the next thing that you now need to come and do is to come and look at that, come and look at, come and look at the net assets of the subsidiary. So give us the net assets of the subsidiary. Net assets, if you remember from our previous sessions, net assets are what here, we always look at net assets from our equity perspective. So give us the equity components of the subsidiary. So when you talk of equity, we are looking at things like the share capital, the share capital, we are looking at things like the share capital. We have here the share premium. We have the share premium, the share premium. We have in this case here, retained earnings, retained earnings, retained earnings, retained earnings, retained earnings, retained earnings. We have retained earnings. And then of course we'll be having any fair value, any fair value adjustment, any fair value adjustment. So remember that you have to give us this net asset at acquisition, at acquisition and at reporting. Very important, at acquisition and at reporting. At acquisition and at reporting, at reporting. So then what do we have here somebody? 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 Come and look at the equity component of which company? Of Mali. Remember, Mali is the only subsidiary we have in this question. So, Mali, please go to the equity component. So, we have the ordinary share capital of Mali. It is 6,000. So, remember, ordinary share capital will not keep on. Ordinary share capital and the share premium, 2,500. Those ones will not keep on fluctuating for the subsidiary. So, in this case here, ordinary share capital at acquisition is 6,000. So, the same in this case here will be applicable at reporting, at reporting, at reporting, 6,000, 6,000, 6,000. The same case here with the share premium. So share premium at acquisition we've seen, or rather at reporting is 2,500. The one given in the financial statement is at reporting. So automatically the same will be applicable at acquisition. 
So retained earnings, you have to be very careful with retained earnings. What we have here is at reporting. So we have retained earnings, retained earnings, they are calling them reserves, revenue reserves, revenue reserves at uh, reporting is 2720. So revenue reserves, revenue reserves, they are calling this revenue reserves. And the revenue reserves, what we have at reporting, at reporting, revenue reserves at reporting, revenue reserves at reporting, revenue reserves at reporting is 2720. Revenue reserves at reporting is 2720. Is 2720. And then we have, uh, in this case here, revenue reserves at acquisition. When we were acquiring the subsidiary, what amount do we have there? What some books would be calling pre acquisition? So revenue reserve, revenue reserve at acquisition, we are told here. Mali Limited acquired, no, no, no. Panaka Limited acquired Mali on this date. And on that date, Mali had revenue reserves of 1,500 million. Our figures are in millions. So 1,500. So in this case here, we have revenue reserves on acquisition is 1,500. Is 1,500. And then we look for information of what year, fair value adjustments, the revaluations basically. So do we have any revaluations in this question, really? Do we have any revaluations in this question? If you look at this question pretty well, on 1st of December, Mali held the stock. This is for unrealized profits on stock. Number two, in the year ended, uh, Fanaka Limited made sales. Again, this is for UPS at the, at the end, closing. Three, all the three companies paid interim dividend will not affect us in fair value adjustment. Intercompany outstanding balances, this again will not affect us for fair value. Any goodwill, that will not affect us at all. Six fair value of tangible assets were not materially different from their book values on the date of acquisition, uh, acquired its control in Mali. And on that date, Mali Limited acquired its holding in Equator Limited. So there were no fair value adjustments. There were no fair value adjustments. So fair value adjustment, zero, zero. Fair value adjustment, fair value adjustment is what here is zero. Fair value adjustment. So the fair value adjustment, of course, as you've read there, is zero, zero, right? And then come and give us the totals. The total acquisition, if you add the three figures, you'll end up getting 10,000. For reporting uh, totals, net assets, you'll end up getting 11 to 20. So the difference between the two is what we call post-acquisition profit. Pop, pop. Post-acquisition profit is the difference between the two. And this post-acquisition profit is what will be shared out between the parent and the subsidiary, between the parent and subsidiary in accordance to their what year, their percentage. Like now the parent year owns 90%. So what we call non-controlling interest will be owning what year, 10%. So that will be shared out, but that is a, another step, a different step. Today, I'm just here to teach you how we get what we call goodwill. That is the lesson of today. The objective of today is to calculate goodwill. Now from there, I'll be able to go to my third step. So my third step is this important step of what year of goodwill. So my third step is this important step of goodwill. So goodwill, what do we have here under goodwill? So under goodwill, remember goodwill, it's quite a simple thing to calculate. We shall look at our investment in this subsidiary. How much do we invest in the subsidiary? So our investment in the subsidiary has two components. We have the parents, the parents consideration. So the parent gave how much? The parent gave how much? The parent gave how much for this great exercise? How much did the parent pay? How much did the parent pay? How much did the parent pay? So they never gave us uh, the exact uh, procurement uh, price here, but if you look at your statement of financial position, you'll be able to see the investment in Mali. And you'll be able to see that uh, Fanaka, the parent here paid 8,400, paid 8,400 for that investment. To buy Mali's ma shares in Mali, they paid 8,400. Remember they never bought 100%. They only bought what percentage? 90%. Meaning that there is a smaller, 
there is another investor who bought this balancing figure. So in this case here, the parent company bought 90%. So then 10% was bought by NCR. 10% was bought by NCI. So come and give us the NCI's consideration. The NCI's consideration. The NCI's consideration. So NCI's consideration, there are two ways of getting this. In most cases, we'll be given the fair value of non-controlling. In most cases, we'll be given the fair value of non-controlling. Fair value of non-controlling in most cases. But in this question, the examiner never gave us anywhere anything to do with fair value of NCI. That was not given. It's not given. So if it's not given, then what do we do? Then we shall be able to apply what we call the partial method. What we call the partial method. So we shall apply the partial method. And the partial method means what year that uh, you come here and uh, take the NCI's percentage of the net assets. NCI's percentage of the net assets. Remember when we are calculating goodwill, we use net assets at acquisition. Whenever we are calculating goodwill, we use net assets at acquisition. So the total net assets at acquisition were 10,000. So I'll take 10% of 10,000, which will give me what year? A thousand like that. Meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that the total, that, uh, the total consideration, the total amount that we gave to be able to acquire now 100%, 100% of the subsidiary was 9,400. 9,400 is what we gave to acquire Mali Limited. And then from there, we'll come and less, we'll come and compare these to the net assets of Mali, net assets of the sub, net assets of the sub at acquisition. At, at, we can see at acquisition, this subsidiary was worth more. The worth of this subsidiary was higher. So meaning that we gave less than the value of the subsidiary, meaning that we are, we are lucky, we bargain, we bargain. So then at the end of the day, if you subtract this, you'll be able to get a negative what here? 600, a negative 600. So these are negative 600. So basically this negative 600 will be your negative goodwill. Although we don't call it negative goodwill, in the IFRS language, we'll call it what here? A bargain purchase. So it is a bargain purchase, which basically is a gain, which will go to our income statement. This cannot go to our statement of financial position. So, so the bargain purchase here is 600. The bargain purchase is 600. The bargain purchase is 600. So, and gentlemen, should you want uh, more information about this, please join RCM Online College by calling mm -hmm. this number. These are some of the topics that I've given students quite a lot of a uh, challenge. But once in this case, here you have got uh, great tutors. This basically becomes something that is uh, very easy for you to do what here to handle. Look at even this method. Not many teachers use this method. I'm not saying that I'm the best, but mm -hmm. given what I do, because as you know, those that I have taught before, you know my work, my work out there, apart from teaching out there, my work is group accounting. I'm a group accountant. So I'm teaching you things in a very practical way. So please join us today. Our rates are very good. Just call this number and we shall be able to serve you. Thank you very much and be blessed.